Welcome to Grassroots Gazette, from the ground up, where football lives and breathes. Join us as we explore the heart of the game. This is Grassroots Gazette, from the ground up. The grassroots footballers that allows players to track their performance, improve their game and compete with others in the community. Galacticos app. Download today. Please check out galacticos.com for more developments. Don't forget to network with us. Help us grow. Next, get ready to meet Beatrice, a powerhouse on the pitch whose love affair with football kicked off at the mere age of six years old. From sun up to sundown, you can find her out in the garden or tearing up the park, perfecting her skills solo. But she's not just about football, oh no. Beatrice is a force to be reckoned with in hockey, cross country and athletics too, reaching impressive heights in each. Her boundless energy and passion for sports makes her a true all-rounder. So buckle up and join us as we delve headfirst into Beatrice's exhilarating journey through the world of sports. Please welcome Beatrice. Boom, boom. That was a really boom. kind introduction. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Very welcome. Very welcome. Okay, so we're going to go straight into the first block, which is personal questions. So first one is, what's your full name, nickname, and any socials you'd like to share with us? Um, so my full name is Bishop Rogers and nickname. Some people like to call me B on the football pitch. Not always a massive fan of it, but it's just quicker and easier to say, I guess. <laughs> um, and socials, you can find me across all platforms at Beatrice Rogers underscore. Lovely. Excellent. OK, next up. How old are you and where are you from? Um, so I'm 18 and I'm from Cambridge. From Cambridge. Lovely. Repping the ends. Lovely. <laughs> OK, <clears throat> who do you currently play for and where are they based? <laughs> so I play for Cambridge United at the moment, but um, and they're based in Sydney, so around Cambridge. But I also, towards the end of the season, I went on out on loan to Stevenage to get some more game time, and they're based in Letchworth. Lovely. Excellent. OK, what is your position in the team and what's your shirt number? So I play centre-back for both Stevenage and Cambridge. Nice. At Cambridge, my number was 19, and Stevenage, number two. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, here we go. Let's get into this now. So who or what motivated you to start playing football? Um, I, I was thinking about this. I think what got me into football, so we were actually lucky enough to have season tickets at the Emirates when I was younger. Nice. We, we got them when I was seven and it was the highlight of my week every week. I remember I used to turn up to matches with a little notebook, little okay. notebook and pen, age like seven or eight, and I just analyse every single detail of the players, of the match day experience, just all of it. I completely fell in love with football from there. Lovely. That's excellent. So it wasn't even like um, playing yourself or someone telling you to start playing football. It was just going to the games and mm -hmm. taking notes, you know. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> I've just started that now and I'm 40. <laughs> well done. Well done. All right. So um, next question is, which players have helped shape your playing style? So back to the Emirates, me going with my little notebook. When when I was going, I think Koscielny was one of the main centre-backs. And I really, really liked his playing style and the way he was like a cool, calm, confident centre-back. So I think he probably shaped my game a bit. I reckon I probably modelled off him. But then growing up a bit as well, Leah Williamson in the women's side of the game, I really like her style of football and try, tried to replicate some of that. Nice, nice, nice. Excellent, excellent. All right. I think you kind of already answered this, but which club do you dream of playing for and do you support them? <laughs> I would absolutely love to play for Arsenal one day. That would be yeah. the ultimate dream. And yeah, I support them. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay. Do you have any pre-game rituals or superstitions when your so player is? Yeah. I don't really think them as superstitions but you might you might call them that yeah before, before a match like when I'm getting ready the main thing I do I like to put like my socks and my boots on in the same order okay. like, like right sock left sock left boot right boot if it's if I mess it up I've got to restart it <laughs> in that order. um do you do you remember like the first time you did that was it because you won or something good happened is that why you continued it no, I don't have any memory of the first time doing that, but I, I, <laughs> yeah, I quite like having a routine before matches. That's really important to me. And that just feels like part of the routine now. Okay, cool, cool. I like that. See, everyone's been telling me, no, I don't have one. I don't have one. So you're like, you're not first. You're the first. 
I like that. All right. When it comes to brand of boots, do you have a particular favorite that you have and which ones do you wear? Yeah, so um, I currently wear the Under Armour Shadow Elite 2 boots and they are the best boots ever. I've only started wearing them recently, but they're so much better than anything I've worn before. They're so lightweight and comfortable. I I love them. Good, good. Good protection on them. I'm hearing Yeah, Yeah, they're good. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, next question. Are you the type of player who enjoys training sessions? If yeah. so, could you say why or why not? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I always love training sessions. So I actually, so I, like you said earlier, I started playing when I was six, but I didn't join a team until I was 11. So that was five years of me just training by myself. That's kind of how I fell in love with football through the training. I didn't really play matches until I was 11. Okay. So from a young age, I've always loved the training. I love how you can like, go out with a target, practice it, and you can see the improvement, which you don't always get during a match. Day. Obviously, it's nice to win on during a match, but yeah. I love seeing that progress and the improvement. I've always loved that. Okay. okay. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Um, in, your, in your view, what makes a great, I was going to say a great player, but let me say a great defender? Mm. Do you mean on the pitch or off the pitch? Yeah, on, like, on the pitch, on the pitch. On the pitch. Okay. Yeah. Like Great you have a few attributes that they need to have to be a great defender. I think to be a great like centre back, that style of defending, you need to be really fearless. You need to be able to go into those challenges, not scared of getting injured or any of that. You go because if you go into a 50-50 half-heartedly, the other player is going to win every every yeah. single time. So you need to be yeah. fearless, probably calm as well. And one one v ones is something that's quite important. All of that kind of stuff. Cool, cool, cool. I like that. All right, here we go. Next one is Cambridge United. Isn't your first team that you've played for? Could you tell us about the other teams that you've played for? So Cambridge United is the first adult team I played for. Oh. They, that was my transition to adult football. But before them, I played for some grassroots teams. I played for local teams. So Cottenham and Saffron Warden were my two grassroots teams growing up. But I also played for... There used to be an England pathway where they'd have county, regional and national. And I played in the county section of the pathway. So the Cambridgeshire ACC growing up for about four or five years. Seeing, okay. Okay. So, yeah. So Cambridge is your official adult. adult. Yeah. All right. Cool. Lively. All right. On your LinkedIn page, because I do a little bit of research, <laughs> my main aim is to play football professionally one day for the Women's Super League team, as well as playing for the England Lionesses. So my question is to you, because I also know that you play other sports, which we'll get into as well. Mm-hmm. Um, what if Team GB came knocking? Is there <laughs> anything that could sway you away from football? Or your eyes are set, I'm, I'm, it's football. To a different sport? Yeah, so, like, yeah, like, so you know, hockey, anything else. If they were to like, come on, B, we want you. <laughs> Playing high-level sport in anything would be incredible, but I've tried loads of sports and nothing is the same as football for me football's special lovely lovely okay here we go last three questions in this block football aside who has been the biggest influence in your life off the pitch i'm not sure about like an individual but i'd say i've got a really like strong network of supportive people around me be my parents my siblings also got some teachers at school who've been really supportive and without these people I don't think I have would have been as successful as I have been currently or hopefully I'm going on to be excellent lovely all right next one it's a little deep or it's a little light depending how you take it what does football mean to you football means everything to me it means absolutely everything if I've had a bad day football is the thing that's gonna make me feel better like, I I don't know if I'd be doing as well as I am without football. Football is the thing that makes me feel good. You feel alive. Okay, yeah. yeah. I hear you. I hear you. All right. Last question in this block is, can you tell us who is Ace? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I actually live in the countryside. Yeah. Um, and I help look after some sheep. Okay. Which... I, I love being outside and being in nature, that kind of stuff. And Ace is one of the sheep that I've named. So she 
lost her mum when she was born so she was orphaned so um you have to bottle feed the lambs if they don't have a mum yeah so i bottle fed her from a really young age and i i feel like she's formed some sort of attachment to me whenever i go out she comes and says hi and she's really really friendly now really friendly <laughs> Nice, nice. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, I have to ask that question. <laughs> to say, who's ace? Lovely. All right, so we're going to go now. We're going to come back and play a Would You Rather game. We'll be back right after this. The moment is a victory. Welcome to Grassroots Gazette from the ground up where football's journey begins. Okay, so here we go. Would you rather? So I've got 16 of these. So I'll give you the rules. So the first one is, so you can just answer the question. Like you can just pick a side and we move on. You can explain yourself if you feel you have to, or if it's too hard, we can skip it. Yeah? So we've okay. got 16 of these. First one is Jonah, or Jonas, shall I say, or Emma Hayes. That's, that's a tough one, actually, because obviously yeah. being an Arsenal fan... Jonas has been incredible, incredible manager. Yep. But taking a step back from my love for Arsenal, I think Emma Hayes has been <laughs> has been brilliant for women's football. And I think it's really inspiring as a young female footballer myself to see uh, a woman being a coach and being a really successful coach. So I have a lot of respect for Emma Hayes. But at the same time, Jonas has been a great, great manager for Arsenal. So I'm actually not sure I can answer this one. <laughs> you skip that one. Lovely. It's all right. All right. Think of football media. So we got like Sky Sports, Talk Sport versus the YouTubers. Which would you rather? I'm a fan of Sky Sports, Talk Sport. I, I would have to go with that. Okay. Cool. No problem. No problem. Number three, rather play in the rain or play in the snow? Rain. Rain, yeah. <laughs> slide tackles you can do when it's raining. Those kind of slide tackles, that's up there with my favourite part of football. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing beats that. <laughs> lovely, lovely. <laughs> All right, number four. Would you rather clear the ball off the line last minute to win a game or have a teammate score last minute to win a game? I mean, <laughs> winning a game either way is, is pretty good, but... I'd, I'd love to clear the ball off the line last minute. There's something special about that. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, nicknames. Would you rather have Hackem Down Rogers or Brick Wall Rogers? <laughs> Ooh, Brick Wall Rogers. Brick Brick wall wall. Rogers. I feel like that's, that's, got, that's got better connotations. Solid yeah. defender. <laughs> Hackem Down. When I actually wrote that down, it made me laugh. <laughs> Hackem Down Rogers. All right, next one. Give the refs the new blue card or keep it as it is, yellows and reds. The blue card's like the sin bin, right? Yeah. I'm actually quite a fan of that. So okay. I'm a I'm a referee as well. And in grassroots football, even in the football I play for Cambridge United, they've got sin bins, is already introduced at that level of the game. Okay. And I think it's been brilliant as a referee and a player. I think it has helped the game a lot. So I'm actually excited if that gets implemented. I'm excited to see that at the top level. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I've interviewed three referees so far, so you're the third. So far, it's two against one that says, keep it. Okay. One said, nah, we don't, we don't, I don't want that. <laughs> oh, cool. All right, here we go. Next up, keep VAR or get rid? The vote is up today, they say. There's there's a lot of controversy around VAR. There is. I, th I think VAR is a good idea, but I think the rules that have been used to the rules that currently are around VAR. It's yeah. so like grey, like it's not black or white, like this is a handball, this isn't a handball. It's so grey. So then I don't think it's being used right in the game currently. But I like I like how it could be. Like the offside rule, that's I think that's done quite well. Although yeah. it's like really it's that's really black or white. You're offside or you're not. But so I'd say keep it, but I do think it needs some like modification to the rules. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. All right, next one. Would you rather score the winning goal in the World Cup final or win a Ballon d'Or? Winning goal in a World Cup final. 100%. 100%. Thank your country in a World Cup final. Winning it. Wow. I don't think I don't think you can top that. Excellent. All right, here's one. Get praised by your teammates or get praised by your coaches? Hmm... I think both are important. I think getting praise from both is important and it's it's a good sign if you're getting praise from both. 
probably teammates. That's quite special. They're the people you're like fighting hard for on the pitch, putting your body on the line for. So to get praise from them, that feels good. But obviously, coaches are also really important. The ones who make the selection come Sunday. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Yeah, no answer. All right, Here, here's one. Would you rather play like Leah Williamson or Katie McCabe? Leah Williamson. Leah Williamson. I, I'd love love to be half as good as she is. Nice, excellent. England captain and all that. Lovely, yeah. lovely. <laughs> all right. Would you rather play in play play a game of football on a windy day or in scorching heat? I'm not a fan of the heat. I don't <laughs> do very well when it's hot. And obviously, you, you can't do slide tackles when the grass is oh, bone yeah. dry. <laughs> but, I mean, wind makes it unpredictable. That That's yeah. difficult as well. But I'd probably have to go wind because it's hard for everyone. Yeah, that, yeah, cool. <laughs> Lovely. All right, here we go. Next one. Play in the World Cup final or play in the Champions League final? World Cup final. World I don't Cup think final. it gets more special than playing for your country and on such like a big stage as well as World Cup final. That's pretty special. Excellent. Nice. All right. Here's one. Get get a call from get a call to be the first woman to play in the Premier League or be the first one million pound player in the WSL. <laughs> I mean, getting first female player in the Premier League would be special. Like, that would be really special. Yes. But at the same time, I've played quite a lot of boys' football and I feel like they're very different sports. They're very different games and I'm not sure if I'd want to play in the Premier League as the fact that it's boys' football. Right. But, I mean, a million dollars would be nice, but I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> it's not... It comes with pressure as well, I guess. And yeah. I'm, I don't know if that's necessarily what I'm aiming for. I think I'd have to go first player in the Premier League. Premier League, okay, nice. I thought you was leaning the other way there, but quick switch. Oh. All right, lovely. <laughs> All right. Last three in this is: Would you rather? Would you rather play in a packed stadium, but not on TV, or in a stadium or in an empty stadium, but it's broadcasted worldwide? There's something special about being in a full stadium where you can like you're walking out onto the pitch and you can hear the crowd and they're cheering for you and your team. There's something special about that. It would be lovely to be broadcast live across the world, but if you have no fans in it, it makes the actual game feel kind of dead. So packed stadium. Packed stadium, lovely. All right, here we go. Would you rather win a match with a clean sheet or high scoring thriller? Clean sheet. <laughs> clean sheet. <laughs> Defenders Definitely. talking. Definitely clean sheet. <laughs> All right. Last question in this block is Saturday or Sunday mornings on the pitch with your Cambridge girls or Saturday, Sunday mornings working as a ref? Football. 100%. 100%. 100%. I, yeah. I, enjoy, I enjoy refereeing and it's, it's been good and beneficial for me, but you can't top a football match. Nothing beats it. Nice. Excellent. Lovely. All right. We're going to take a break, come back, and we're going to talk about your experiences. It's a bit split, so player and ref. We're going to talk about a bit of both. Here we go. Being heart of the game. Join us on Grassroots Gazette from the ground up where football thrives. Okay. How many have we got in this one? I think it's 16 in this one. Yeah, 60. So it's split halfway through. Yeah. So first half is player. So what's the most important thing for you when choosing a club to join? Mm. I think the other players in the team, I think like how well you're going to get on with your teammates is quite important because I think as a team, if you've got a close relationship, like a close knit group of players, you're probably going to have more success than if you've got like individuals who are really high level and technical. Right. I also think the coach is also quite important, how well you get on with the coach, like how good a relationship that is, because obviously they're going to be picking the squad as well. Definitely, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Teammates and coach. All right, here we go. Second question. It's a little deep. I'm hoping it's just a no, but let's see. Sexism. Have you had to deal with any sexism as a player? If so, can you tell us about it and how it was dealt with? So sadly, it's not a no for that. Oh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> oh, no. let's I have. Then. I've experienced like, a lot. Like I said earlier, I've played um, quite a lot of boys football growing up. Yeah. It's been great for my physicality and all of that. But being the only girl in a boys team, I mean, it makes you stand out and not always for the right reasons. People making comments. Um, so when I was nine, actually, 
I played a couple of matches in the school football team. I was the first girl in the school team. Mm -hmm. um, but it only lasted a few matches before I got kicked off because the opposition complained about me being a girl. Which yeah. I, read really that. I read that somewhere on one of your pages, yeah. I it's know. hard to take when you're nine. But... Uh, yeah, I bet. I bet you don't even know why. You're like, what's why? What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kids um, down there. And then the last two years, I've been playing for the school football team. And again, I'm the first girl in the um, first team at school okay. and the only girl in it. So that it's been a really, really tough experience these last two years. And I've been really trying to set something up in my school for the next lot of girls coming through because the experience I've had with it hasn't been good at all. Just turning up places and there being no change of rooms and the boys taking the girls' toilets and just... Lots of situations that haven't been dealt with very well, being left out of the team because the coach is trying to protect me because he thinks I'm going to get injured when that's not for him to say. Right, right, yeah. It's, it's been hard. Comments from teammates, opposition, that kind of stuff. It's been really hard playing boys football. But at the same time, I think it has been worthwhile for me playing football. And I am glad I stuck it out and made it to the end because it would have been quite easy for me not to. But um, it's helped with like my physicality and my confidence and everything. It's it's definitely helped. It's just been been hard. Yeah, I bet. I bet. So, are you the? Are you? Was you the only girl to like try out, or was there a lot of girls to try out? You just the only one who made it. No, I'm like the only girl in my school that plays football. Wow, you see, wow. It's yeah. Wow. Ah, uh, well, I'm yes. I'm glad that you stuck at it. I'm glad that you got through, made you stronger, and all that. But I am sorry that you had to deal with that. But yes. I'm glad that you're here. You know what I mean? All right, so here we go. Next question. Tell me about your best day so far playing grassroots football. Best day playing grassroots football. The first thing that comes to mind, when I was like maybe 15, 16, playing for my grassroots team, Yeah. Um, we came up against this opposition, Coton, and they'd been unbeaten like in all competitions for four five years or something right. crazy like that <laughs> um and we turned up we only had 11 players on the pitch like no subs nothing and we beat them three two nice <laughs> 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 it must hate you guys <laughs> that, ruined that beautiful record <laughs> that feeling when the full-time whistle went that was that was really special that was a really really nice moment and we'd all worked so hard to win that match so it was really really satisfying excellent was it uh did you have to hold on to that was it like a free two hold on or last minute scoring third how did that work if you remember? i mean I think we scored with maybe like 10, 15 minutes to go to make it 3-2. And then it was like a like a hold on. Everyone yeah, defend nice. behind the ball, that kind of game. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. Lovely. All right. We're going to switch it. Same type of question. But tell me about your worst day so far playing grassroots football. Worst day. Anything, a loss, an injury, you know. So I've, I've not had too many injuries, so I don't think that. But again, the first thing that does come to mind, I think it's a week ago today, actually, I played in the County Cup final with Cambridge United Under-18s. All right. Side. We went in under as underdogs, but I feel like we dominated the match. We I feel like we deserved to win, um, but we didn't. We lost 2-1. And I don't think I've had a loss that hurt as bad as that did. As that, that, one, that one stung. I bet, I bet. Keep you stronger for next year, hopefully. Yeah, definitely, I mean, definitely. Excellent. excellent. All right, next question, number five. Are there any, in your view, are there any misconceptions about being a young footballer, i.e. they're crybabies, they're too soft, that type of thing? Is there anything that you hear a lot of that you think, uh, you people just don't know? <laughs> the only thing that I'd say something that I've been aware of misconception wise is I feel like a lot of people have the view that footballers aren't very clever maybe like people give up their education to pursue football uh -huh. and maybe that is the case some of the time but I wouldn't say it's all of the time like I I'm doing my education and my football and I know a lot of people who are pursuing both routes going to uni and trying to play football and I feel like that is a bit of a misconception particularly in the women's game I think a lot of people do do both yeah no I like, yeah, no, no, that's good that you brought it up because even as I, I've been watching the Arsenal women for about three years now, like properly, like every week watching them. And mm -hmm. I used to do like little mini bios about individuals and 
there's not one that isn't that didn't get uni degrees. I was like, wow, it's like I think it's more the men's side that yeah, yeah all they had was football, football, football <laughs> focused. But the women, it's like they weren't sure if football was gonna blow up the way it has, so they had to have backup for life and they got back up for life. The degrees that some of these Arsenal women got are ridiculous. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, oh, exactly. yeah. So, yeah, that's excellent. That, yeah, no, I agree with you. But I do think that's more, they think like the, the men are, are a bit simple. <laughs> yeah, probably. You get me? But all right, next one is, what is the biggest sacrifice that you've had to make to pursue football, do you think? Mm, I don't know about like one big sacrifice that I've made, but I do feel over the years i've sacrificed lots of small things like parties meeting up with friends that kind of stuff yeah. because like come a friday night everyone wants to go out and i'm like no sorry i've got a match saturday morning yeah, yeah. morning Training and all that yeah yeah, yeah nah. i feel i feel like it's a lot of little things and it does add up it is hard when you see all your friends posting on social media about them all meeting up together and you've been in the gym for the last two hours or something like it it has its moments where it's tough but i wouldn't have it any other way like i'd, I'd rather be on the football pitch yeah, anyway. exactly <laughs> excellent that's it that's it all right next up we've got what's the best piece of advice that you've received in football so far mm, best piece of advice I've had quite a few coaches tell me to um, not be so hard on myself after a loss. Okay. I feel like, particularly as a defender, like if you make a mistake, it can lead to a goal, which ultimately could be a, um, what leads to the loss, you losing the game. Mm -hmm. And for me, I can be quite hard on myself when that happens. I, I expect quite high standards of myself. Um, so I feel like it's important for me and it's quite good advice generally to like take the lessons from the loss but not too deep like I heard one saying something like you should um a lot of people say like once you win go out for a drink that kind of thing and loss they'll sit down and analyze it but flip it the other way around like you should go out for a drink after a loss like you should relax celebrate that kind of thing but after a win you should analyze what you've done right instead of always analyzing what you've done wrong nice nice I like that yeah just flip it yeah yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That does make sense. I like that. Cool. All right. So um, what is your favourite way to relax after a game? So I quite like being out in nature. I quite like, so I've got a dog as well. Mm. I like to get my dog on a walk, that kind of thing, just as like a switch off after the game. But a lot of it, because I've been so busy with football and school, I don't have that opportunity to relax. A lot of my time is put into the recovery after a game. So I get home, maybe ice bath, foam rolling, and then early night, that kind of stuff. But okay. yeah, so I, it's not relax, it's more recovery. Yeah, yeah but different, if, different R word. <laughs> if I had the time for the relaxation, I quite like watching a film, maybe some colouring, dog walk, that kind of stuff is really good. Nice, excellent. All right, next up we got if you could follow the path of any player in the world of football, whose path would you like to follow? Leah Williamson. Leah Williams. 100%. <laughs> she's, she's the player I'm aspiring to be like, 100%. And that's both on and off the pitch. I love what she's doing for the women's game off the pitch as well as on it. But on the pitch, I think she's a massively underrated player. And I think she's she's brilliant. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I love me some Leah. All right. Next question is, what do you look for in a coach? Are you the? Do you want the arm around the shoulder, or can you take the hair the hair dry treatment? Can you handle that? Like, what do you look for in a coach? Your your coach. What do you look for? I feel like there needs to be a balance. Like I can can take a coach getting cross with me for a mistake. Like I can take that, and I quite I quite like a coach who tells me what I'm doing wrong. Like if I don't know what I'm doing wrong, I need them to say it. I don't always like a coach who's just gonna be like, Oh, you did great, you did great. Yeah, you did great. Don't worry, you did great, you did great. Yeah. Like that's, <laughs> well, that's some that's, feedback, yeah. Some, yeah some, okay. That's that's not helpful, but I feel like there needs to be a balance between the two. Like I don't always want someone who's screaming at me when I'm on the pitch. Like I need to try and focus on my own game as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear um, that. <laughs> but a bit of a bit of a balance, a bit of both. Okay, cool. All right, so that was the last question player-wise. Let's go into referees. So what made you start refereeing? <clears throat> so I actually started refereeing, I think I did the course when I was like 13, um, basically just to try and make a bit of money. Okay. In, <laughs> in grassroots football, it pays quite well, especially when you're like 14, 13. 
it's, it's a decent amount of money. Um, <laughs> but I also, I did it for that, but also partly I saw that it would be an opportunity for me to understand the game better, understand the rules, which would benefit me on the pitch as well. Nice, nice. Okay, next up is tell me about a challenging situation you had to face as a referee and how you dealt with it. So being a female referee in grassroots football has like comes with its own set of problems. Turning up to referee like under 16 boys on a Saturday morning, you're, you're getting funny looks from some people, to be honest. Um, and it's not always the players who are the issue because you kind of have control over the players. But being like a very young female referee, the parents and the coaches are more the issue. And you kind of have less control over that because what can you do for a parent? Like send them off. (laughs) Maybe they're not really going to listen to you. Um, So that's more of an issue. And I've just had like comments and people shouting at me as I'm walking back to the car after the match, just that kind of stuff, which is a shame, but it's part of it, I guess. Yeah, no, I've heard from coaches and other referees that, yeah, Parents, it's the top of the <laughs> parents. Normal fans, yes, but 100%. parents top them. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. All right. Next question is: Tell me about your best day as a referee to date. The best day. So I've had some really good experiences of refereeing as well. I've refereed quite a lot of um, girls football matches, which I think is brilliant because when I was a young girl playing football, I didn't see any female referees either. Okay, so go. I think even just that representation is brilliant and. Referee in the women's game, the young girls, it's a lot. It's a lot friendlier, a lot nicer, a lot more relaxed. So I actually really like it. Just getting as well that like close up, watching kids loving and enjoying their football as well. Just getting to witness that on Saturday morning, it's, it's quite nice. Getting involved, it's, it's good fun. I like that. That's good. Excellent. Okay, next up is, I think you've kind of answered this already, but has becoming a referee opened your eyes, opened your player eyes to what referees have to deal with? If so, how? You kind of explained already, but could you go Yeah, it, it has 100%. Like, I'll be refereeing on a Saturday and then come Sunday I'm with Cambridge or Stevenage. Yeah. And I've got players, like my teammates, hurling abuse at the referee. And I'm just like, I actually <laughs> think the decision they made was right. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I I feel like I'm more likely to back a referee because it's hard. Maybe they've seen something that I haven't. Like, I can't expect them to see everything I see. And it is hard. It's definitely made me appreciate it more. Um, But I also, I think it's helped me as a player know when to push the referee, like when to get in their ear, do it in a polite way, maybe. I'm never one to shout at the referee. I'll have a conversation with them. But it's definitely helped me as a player. Like, I know when to ask for stuff. And not to, and knowing the rules as well. Sometimes you get referees a low like level football who don't really know the rules, and then I can have that conversation. And be like, I'm a referee as well. This is my knowledge of the rules. Hey. Like, it's, it's not matching up with yours. Like, what's going on? That kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, look at that. I was speaking to myself. Yeah. There's another referee on the field. Look at that like, backseat referee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's quite funny. Yeah. Look I, at- I try and be respectful with it because if I'm a referee and I'm refereeing, a player who's also a referee. Yeah. If they're shouting at me, I'm not necessarily going to take as much notice as if they come over and have a conversation. So I always try and be respectful, but yeah, a little bit of backseat refereeing, I guess. (laughs) That's cool. That's cool. All right. Next question. Last two. From your viewpoint, how is refereeing looking for the future? Like as a Premier League viewer, frustrated as hell. But from the referees that I've interviewed, they've told me from their, their point of view, it's look, it's bright, it's bright. Like the referees are coming, the good referees are coming. Can you see that? Is that something that you see? Yeah, maybe. What I see, because obviously I do very low level, like the bottom of football. I'm not a very high level referee at right. all. Um, but what I do see is there's not enough referees. Okay. Every single weekend on our refereeing group chat, it's like, can you cover three games, <laughs> four games this weekend? Because there's there's just not enough. Okay. Which I don't know about the quality of referees coming through, but. I feel like with the abuse you can see of high level referees, mm-hmm. you're not going to get as many kids being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go oh, do my yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, I want to go get abused today <laughs> on a Sunday morning. Yeah, no, I hear yeah. that. definitely. I, I feel like we're not going to have enough referees if the abuse at the top level keeps happening. People just aren't going to want to do it. And even the abuse at low level football, like yeah. there have been times where I'm like, I don't really want to referee anymore. This isn't fun. Same. So something needs to change. Otherwise, there's not going to be the quantity of referees that we need for football. 
Definitely, I hear that. All right, last question in this block is, if there was one thing that you would want players and fans to understand about ref, about the ref slash refereeing, what would that be? I think it would be great if people could understand that you can't see everything on pitch. It's completely impossible and you're just trying to make the best decision that you can and you're definitely not going to get that 100% right all of the time because you can't see everything, you're human, you're going to make mistakes. But I feel like people probably do deep down know and understand that, but they need to be more respectful in the way they are speaking to the referee because okay. some of what players say to me just isn't <laughs> isn't really okay. If you had that in any other workplace, like if I showed up for like a job in a cafe and people were speaking to me like that, it's... Just, yeah, it just wouldn't run at all, yeah. No, <laughs> no. I, I do, I, I tell you, because I, I think people... Like they, they, what's the word I'm looking for? They enable it by saying, ah, the fans pay to come. So they have a right to say what they want. Yeah, to a level though. You know what I mean? To a level that, come on, to a level. But, but like, <laughs> with, that, with that theory, like if I pay to go eat in a restaurant, that doesn't give me the right to right. abuse the chef. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's my point. I don't think people understand that. Yeah, it's not always customers always right. Yeah. All right, lovely. Thank you for that. We're going to take a little break and we're going to come back and I've got eight scenarios for ya. Passion meets the pitch. This is Grassroots Gazette from the ground up, uncovering football's true spirit. Okay, so here we go. We've got eight scenarios for you. Number one is, <clears throat> so during a critical match, you, you accidentally trip an opponent inside the penalty area. The referee doesn't see the incident. Do you confess or do you just keep, keep going? Probably keep going. Probably keep going. Especially if it's a critical match. I think that scenario only changes if I've, if I've injured the player. If, okay. they're, if they're injured and it's bad, I'm not going to keep going. If it's a bad injury, head injury, that kind of stuff, yeah. and the referee's not noticed it, I'll probably stop. But if the referee's not noticed it, I've just tripped someone up slightly and it's all fine. I'll keep going. I'm not. Going, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I did something wrong, ref. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> not like that. All right, cool, cool, cool. Next one, number two. Your team is leading by one goal in the dying minutes of a game. The opposite, <clears throat> the opposite team earns a corner kick. Do you opt to clear the ball at a safety or do you try to start a counter-attack and risk a potential equaliser? Clear it, hundred. Clear it out of there. <laughs> it's, it's not worth that risk. If we're one nil up, just just get rid, get rid. Just get rid. All right, cool, cool, cool. Lovely. Next one. You notice that the referee has mistakenly awarded a throw in to your team, although it should be the opponent's. Do you correct the referee on that decision, or do you just take it? I think no, you don't correct the referee because there's going to be a bit for both team. And like I said earlier, the referee definitely will make mistakes, but I do feel it probably evens itself out. Like there'll be times they give the opposition a throw in or a corner when it's not actually for them and it should yeah. be for us instead. So no, I'll just let it let it play on. I mean, I'll, <laughs> I'll probably I'll say something maybe if it's the the referee's given the opposition a throw in and it's ours. Yeah, I might, yeah. I might say a comment, but um. <laughs> No, I let it, let it slide. <laughs> let it slide. All right, cool. <clears throat> Facing a particular fast and skillful opponent, do you stick to the traditional defensive tactics or do you adapt it to, to, to the playing style of your opponent? I feel you have to adapt it. You have to adapt. There's different ways to defend against different players. Like if you're fast, you don't want to give them that time and space to get round you. So you've got to be tight and not let them turn when they get the ball. So I feel like you have to adapt it for different styles cool. of attackers. Different yeah, cool. Excellent. <clears throat> During a break in play, the, op the opposition tries to distract you with some witty banter. How do you respond and maintain focus while appreciating the humour? <laughs> I don't really like to get involved in conversations okay. with the opposition during a match. Okay, okay. <laughs> I feel like I play my best when I'm in the zone, when I'm focused on my game, my team, all of that. I'm not really one to get involved in the conversation. Occasionally, I might try and wind up the opposition a little bit and get involved that way. But no, I normally like to just stick to my own game, focus on me. I won't really get involved. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So you stay out of that. All right, fair enough. Number six is your teammate dives for a penalty. The referee doesn't see the dive, but you do. Do you intervene and inform the referee about your teammate's dive or stay quiet? 
As in, like, I do I tell the referee that I think it should be a penalty or tell you the referee? It shouldn't be. It's like, no, my my, my teammate dived. No. If if we've got the penalty, no, I'm <laughs> taking the penalty. <laughs> Staying quiet then. Lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> All right. Got last two here. <clears throat> With the opposition team um, adding a lot of pressure to your defence, you notice a gap in their defence and you could exploit it with a long ball to your striker. Do you take that risk or do you give it to someone closer? So you're under pressure. You can I see, feel like, see your, your girl up there. <laughs> if you're if you're under pressure anyway, you probably want to relieve that pressure by getting the ball higher up the pitch okay. anyway. Especially if there is that gap. You can see maybe their left back is struggling. They've got a niggle or something. They're struggling at this point of the game. You probably want to exploit so, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give your defence a time to step up, relax, get back in the game. Cool, cool, cool. All right, here we go. The last one in this block. Your opponent is through on goal with only the goalkeeper to beat. You are the last defender. Do you take them out or do you trust your goalkeeper to make the save? I trust my keeper. Oi, okay. All, all, of the, the, all, of the teams, all of the teams I play in actually have really, really strong goalkeepers. I've got really good keepers behind me. So I would trust my keeper. I try and maybe like knock the player off balance to give my keeper a better chance but no not worth the the red card and the penalty when i back my keeper right excellent lovely 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 all right take a little break come back and we've got some random questions for you meets the pitch this is grassroots gazette from the ground up uncovering football's true spirit Okay, in this one here, how many we got? Ten questions in this one. So here we go. First one. How would your coaches and teammates describe you? I'd like to think that they'd describe me as hardworking, consistent, like committed, all of that. Because I feel like I feel like that describes me quite well. I'm always there early, one of the last to leave, that kind of stuff. Really right. can't always say I'm the best on the pitch, can't always say I'm very technically gifted but I'd like to say that I'm someone who won't give up and will keep keep trying keep listening all of that kind of stuff that's what I'd hope they describe me as cool excellent I like that I like that fair play all right next question is how do you personally deal with a loss after a game is there something that you do somewhere you go someone you go and talk to and chill with what's your process so a loss can be really hard like I said like the loss last week in the county cup final that was really really tough to take one thing like I always try and keep in mind is my personal performance because at the end of the day, like the level I'm currently at is quite, my personal development is quite important and I'm aiming to improve every week. So if I've messed up, I've had an awful game, I'll go and I'll try and analyse it, speak to coaches, try and get a few other people's opinions on my game because I can be sometimes a bit harsh on myself and someone else might turn around and be like, actually, you did all right, your defence did okay, the opposition were just better. Like, that was just what it was down to. But um, I'd quite like to just try and take my mind off football if I'm really like in my own head about the performance and the loss. So going outside, dog walk, watching a film, just okay. trying, to, trying yeah. to switch off a bit <laughs> from it. I hear that. I hear that. Okay, next question is, as you wear both hats of referee and player, should the referee get respect automatically or should the ref have to earn respect from the players first? As a player, I think it's really hard to just turn up and be like, yeah, the ref has the respect. I think yeah. the referee does have to earn that. And that probably comes from how well they're performing as a ref because they could be making really like dodgy decisions where you're a player and you're like, how was that foul? How was that not? Like, there's stuff where you see something they don't and you're questioning their decision. But I think the way they deal with it is quite important and that's probably where the respect comes from. Okay. But yeah, the, I think the referee should probably have to earn respect. I don't think you can expect players just to give you respect anyway. I like that. I like that. All right. Number four is, who do you believe has the hardest job in football? The players, the officials, managers, coaches, the owner... Or anyone else that I've missed out? <laughs> I mean, I'd say probably players and officials are both up there. But at the same time, I've not really had the experience of being a coach. Yeah. So I, I feel like I know those a bit less. 
but obviously officials with the the abuse and that side of it is tough but at the same time I mean I know when I'm turning up to a match at the weekend that I'm kind of signing up for it a bit that's part and parcel with the game at the moment not that it should be but it kind of is Mm -hmm. um at the same time like players they have it quite tough I think with injuries that kind of stuff I think that's probably one of the toughest parts of the game like all round, especially as a player, getting injured and not being able to do what you love is really difficult. Yeah. And like the mental side of things. So it's probably quite close between players and officials, but I'm not, like I said, I'm not really sure about owners. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't really know. <laughs> fair enough. No, fair enough. <clears throat> All right. Let me know if I'm saying this right. The Plantation Sparta girls. Plantation yeah. Sparta girls, PSG. Sparta girls, that's it. You got um, Players Player and Manager's Player of the Year for 2016 and 17. Tell us about that amazing achievement. <laughs> so that was my first year ever playing for a football team. That was my first Look year. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was a complete shock, to be honest. I wasn't, was not expecting to get... How is it? As in, you didn't feel that you was the player. You didn't feel that. I, I felt like I'd had a good season, like okay. I played well, but I just wasn't expecting to get the recognition from my players and my manager. Like that is that's a big achievement, even at grassroots low level football. Yeah, I man. think that's 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 great. Um, that's what I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a good season. And I was just just enjoying my football. We were all playing well as a team as well. We were a really good team back then. <laughs> <laughs> nice, 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 excellent. All right, next question, similar. So the next two questions are similar. Athletics Nationals 2018. <laughs> Tell us about that. What events did you take part in? Where did you finish? How was the experience? So I did um, the 800 meters. That was my event. That was my event. And <laughs> it was, I used to be really, really in country and running that side of things. And, but I mean, I wouldn't really train it. Football was my main sport. I just enjoyed running as well. Right, right. Yeah. So that was my first time the first like athletic season doing the 800 meters so it was a bit bit new I wasn't really used to it um but really grateful to have made its nationals it was a really really cool experience to be honest again completely unexpected in the regionals which was the qualifying I PB'd by like five seconds which was just completely out of the blue not just doing things (laughs) you're just doing it (laughs) yeah um and then at nationals it was a bit different to how it was at regionals so there were lots of very serious high level runners for real yeah people how you take who, football people take athletics yeah 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 so um i turned up very unprepared like no athletic spikes that kind of stuff it just wasn't like i wasn't ready um and I think I came about eighth from memory, so eighth in the country, which I'll take for someone who wasn't ready. Who wasn't ready? <laughs> Get me. Everyone that came below will be pissed. They'll be like, "No, I'm training for this." <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a lot harder, like mentally, than I thought it would be because it was like a long drive there. We got there early in the morning for other people's events, and mine wasn't till like the last in the day. Oh, okay. So it was it was a good experience, but it was it was tough. It was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Same. Okay. Okay. Cool, cool. All right. Next question is Hockey Nationals 2019 to 2020 and 2021 to 22. Tell us about that. What was the who did you play for? Where did you finish? What happened? (laughs) That's with the school team. So um, with my year group, we actually have a really good group of girls in my age group at school. Some players playing really like high level, like verging on England hockey. So yeah really really lucky to be able to be involved with those kind of girls who are um pursuing hockey to a high level so yeah we made it to the national competition which was kind of like a tournament style in 2019 and 20 and then the was it 2022 was more like a um kind of fa cup style so we made it to like the semi-finals of that we lost on penalty flicks didn't make it to the final so that was unfortunate but both were really cool experiences. I wouldn't say I was a natural hockey player. Like there are definitely some transferable skills from football to hockey. They're reasonably similar sports, but I was the person who was kicking the ball more than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was not good. It was not good. That's funny. I like that. <laughs> but um, it was it was good fun. I I really enjoyed playing hockey. I've I've given it up now. I've given up all of my other sports and I'm focusing on football. 
but um both the athletics cross country and hockey they were really beneficial for me growing up i think to get that view of different sports and different skills and techniques yeah. i think that's probably benefited to my football as well definitely excellent lovely all right <clears throat> number eight we've got three more questions left the england international schools is it the isfa girls under 18 team tell us about getting your first cap <laughs> <Stay on. laughs> hey. yeah, so that was actually that was one of the coolest experiences i've had in football so far um so i went and trialed for them back in september of this season uh -huh. and i was placed on the reserve list like i was on the um if and one of the main squad got injured, they'd call me up, right, which right. I, I wasn't even expecting because it's one of these pathways that runs from like under 12s through to under 18s. They kind of have their squad the whole way through. Right, right. So yeah. I, I was really grateful to be picked for the reserves team. And then lucky for me, unlucky for whoever got injured, I'm not really sure, but um, someone had to drop out of the squad for the, the ISFA camp, which happened to be the one that they do at St George's Park. They only do one a year there. So I was really, really, really lucky. Aligned for you. It's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it, it did. It aligned on that day for me. Um, when I got the email to find out that I'd been selected for that, that was that was a good day. That was a really, really nice moment to find that out. Excellent. And then I don't know if you've ever been to St George's Park, but the facilities there are oh, insane. Yeah, I've seen videos and stuff, but I've never been up there. It looks like, ah. Uh... <laughs> wouldn't want to leave type thing <laughs> Literally, it was like football heaven the facilities yeah. just you see like other England top level footballers all of that just it was so cool it was so cool and the, the football and all of that it was a really really good experience from that point of view as well it was really really nice excellent love that love that alright last two what advice would you give a young player who wants to follow your path Um, I think if I think that um, one thing that all young players should remember is they shouldn't necessarily be aiming to follow the path of someone. I think everyone has very individual journeys and routes. Like you take like a Jamie Vardy who got into the Premier League age like 27. It's very unique. Yeah. And I feel like especially with social media now, it's very easy to see like a 16 year old making their debut for a Premier League team. And you're like, why am I not there yet? I want to be like that. I feel like it's very easy to compare yourself. So I feel like that's not necessarily something that's going to be beneficial for a young player. But if I was to give some advice generally, I feel like you need to fall in love with every aspect of football. It's very easy to be that player that's there for the for those wins, for lifting trophies, the league, man of the match. They're there for that bit. They want all of that bit, yeah. but they don't enjoy the gym sessions, the early nights, the healthy diet they don't enjoy that yeah they don't put as much effort into it and eventually don't get as much success back from it so I feel like you need to find your love for all of it like every single aspect of the game and that will keep you showing up and eventually maybe it won't be tomorrow next week this year but you will eventually get those successes that you've been working hard for excellent lovely all right last question in this block it's kind of Jumping into what you were saying there, have you ever wanted to stop or quit football? If so, what made you think that and what got you back on your path? I mean, football's like a it's like a roller coaster. There's some highs and there's some lows, but and the lows can be quite low. I don't think I've ever really considered stopping because okay. the highs that you get from it massively outweigh those lows that there are. But at the end of the day, I just love kicking a ball around. So even when you come off a really tough loss or you've had a bad performance, I just love playing football. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that there'd be much that would make me want to stop. Maybe I'll move teams if I'm struggling somewhere, but I don't, I can't see something that would make me want to stop. I just love football and I have since I first kicked a ball age like six. Excellent, excellent. Lovely. All right, that's the end of that block. We're going to come back and talk about Cambridge United Women. Take a good look, you can see it's a good look. <laughs> All right, so we've got 10 questions in here. It's the second to last block. Here we go. First up, when and why did you decide to join Cambridge United? So I joined Cambridge United 
last season, at the beginning of last season, and I actually joined in their development team okay. through the whole season with the development squad before stepping up to the first team. And I, I joined them to try and make that progression from youth football to adult football, which is quite a hard jump to make, I feel. So that I feel like it was beneficial to play in the development squad for a year. Um, they, I mean, they're kind of the best local side to me, to be honest. Yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're one of the better squads and the facilities and also like having the connection to quite a big, big name as Cambridge United is. I think that's been quite good and it's given me opportunities off the pitch as well as on it. Nice, nice. All right, number two, who is the team captain and can you give me three words to best describe her? So our team captain is Gisela or G, everyone calls her G. Um, and she's really hard working on the pitch. She'll give absolutely everything for that badge. I'm pretty sure she's been at the squad in the squad for a long time now. She's been with the team for a while. Yeah. She she'll fight fight for the team, fight for everyone. She's really caring as well. She's the player come train session, she'll go around and check on everyone. Like before we start, like, how are you? How's your day? That kind of stuff. She's right. a really, really Real, yeah. Player. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Third question. So I don't know if I was looking at the right table, you can tell me you finished seventh last season. Is that right? This, the season that just finished, like a few yeah. weeks ago. You finished, hold on a minute, you finished, yeah, you finished seventh this season. Was it a good season and did you do better than last season? So I don't know about league position because obviously I wasn't with the team last season, but okay. this this season has been a really good season. I know that we've definitely had more points this season than we did last season and the girls have done, done really, really well. They've been really successful. I haven't <coughs> played for them as much as I would have liked and that's why I went out on loan. So I can't. I wasn't at all the games, but they made it to a national national league plate final, okay. which was really impressive. They've basically made history this year as a club. They've <laughs> reached some reached some high highs. But definitely a good season. It's been, all right. you know, it's been brilliant to see and be be a part of, even in a, like a small role. It's been really really good. Excellent, excellent. Okay, number four. Yourself aside, if I was to come down to watch a Cambridge women's game, which play, which of your teammates should I be keeping an eye out for? If you could give me three players. Okay. <clears throat> the first that comes to mind, our goalkeeper. She's cool. called Webby or Webb, um, Lauren Webb. She's class. Some of the saves she makes is insane. She's made like loads of penalty saves this season as well. She's kept us in kept us in big games. She's a class player. Nice. Um, the next one I say one of the centre backs, AJ. AJ. She, she's a young player as well. She's only like twenty, twenty one, something like that. She's young, but she's again a brilliant player. Really, really technically gifted. Really, really solid at the back. And I've really enjoyed playing alongside her for a few games and in training sessions. It's been it's been really good. Um, and then up top, we've got a few players who play up top. So the one player who I would say, Sarah Wilshire. So she's just come back from having a baby, actually. She had um, a baby like a month ago and then came back and played a few games for us, which is insane in itself she's got yeah. three kids now wow yeah congratulations Miss Sarah. <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> that's that's I've witnessed childbirth so I'm like well <laughs> <laughs> well done respect to that definitely All um, right, cool. but she she can find the bottom of the net if you put anywhere on the pitch she'll find the bottom of the net she's she's a class player brilliant nice excellent lovely all right fifth question <clears throat> Who's in charge of the music in the changing room and what type of music gets the team pumped? So I think we've got Sammy and Webby. They're in charge of the speaker. But, <laughs> but music-wise, we've got um, like a team playlist, which we made at the start of the season. Okay. So it's a bit of everyone's like music taste. Everyone can put stuff on that they want. So it's a bit of everything. But those two are the ones in charge of the speaker. They I'm, bring like... The I like that, in charge of the speaker. <laughs> Yeah. So without them, there's no sound. I like that. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> All right. So let me see if I can form this question out. So I've got seven random players that I took from, from your team. I want you to tell me that like, what's their title? Are they the joker? Are they the motivator? Are they the okay. team type thing? Yeah. So mm -hmm. first up, you've already said her name. Um, Lauren Webb. What's her title? 
So she's one of the senior players in the team, I think. She's like one of our vice captains. So okay. she's a really like good leader on the pitch, really good leader, solid goalkeeper. Off the pitch, definitely a joker. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a joker. I'm down the joker. She's, All right, cool. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Next up, we've got Sarah Wilshire. Mama. Sarah Wilshire. So she's our striker, she's class player. Um, off the pitch, I don't know. She's she's a really kind and caring person. Really kind and caring. At the start of the season, when I was breaking into the team, she was very very supportive of me. She's she's a really nice caring person lovely abby jackson is that aj that's aj yeah <laughs> yeah so she's she's again she's one of our vice captains so she's a really good leader on the pitch as well really solid player but i'm um, off the pitch she's really nice really friendly welcoming funny as well bit of everything okay. bit of everything nice nice all right next up we've got misty fox is that right? misty, that? Fox. misty fox parker <laughs> is that right? Yeah. yeah. So she's um one of the junior players in the team. So I play alongside her in the under 18s quite a lot. Okay. Um she's she's a good player. She's really, really friendly as well. A bit very, very outgoing, very outgoing into that all of that kind of stuff, loud off the pitch. But social, um, social butterfly type. Social butterfly, that's a good way to describe it. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's a nice nice girl though. She's also friendly and she's been really nice. Cool. All right. Last two we've got Bella Simmons. Bella Simmons. So she's one of our wingers. I think she's our top goal scorer this season. But um, on the pitch, a really calm on the ball player, really solid player. Off the pitch, she's a bit of a social butterfly, maybe not quite as much. She Again, she's quite kind and she's been really like supportive and welcoming for me. Um, but yeah, a bit of an outgoing social butterfly. Lovely. And last on my list is Haley Jane Simpson. Harley. Harley, sorry, um, Haley. <laughs> Harley. So she's one of our midfielders. I get on really well with her. She's a really, really nice person. She's had a tough season with lots of injuries. So it's been it's been difficult to see her struggling to get back onto the pitch. But um she's been so determined with it. And she has got back from all of the injuries that she's had. And so really hardworking, really nice person, friendly, funny, just just a bit of everything. Lovely. Excellent. All right. Number seven. What are your goals for next season as a defender? I.e. more clean sheets, get faster, jump higher. What's your goals? Clean sheets is always, always <laughs> a target because if, if they can't score, we can't lose. So you've got to get those clean sheets. But I think personally, I'd really like to improve my um, heading and like just my aerial jewels I feel like that's probably one of my weaknesses at the moment so that's something I'm going away focusing on working hard at I like to improve like there's some areas like passing like it's it's okay at the moment but I just feel like it could be more accurate more like consistent just all of that left and right for everything and lastly I, I want to get a goal I've not <laughs> for a while I want to um, improve like converting from corners free kicks that kind of stuff just getting my head on the end of it yeah do something I want to get a goal that is a big target for next season <laughs> Lovely. All right. Last three in this block is what is one or some of your pet peeves, or they say icks, that you have as a player, i.e. teammates being late, playing on a windy day, or players playing with their socks rolled down, Any anything that, that annoys you? <laughs> Uh, I feel like a lot of the like typical like icks that you see on social media. I'm I'm not fussed about like everyone. Everyone can be their own person. They they do what they like. But a few things like being late, just like the standards where people drop their standards and it yeah. kind of affects the whole team. That that can annoy me a bit because that impacts everyone at the end of the day. Very true. Very true. Okay. Cool. So you don't have nothing crazy. Just normal. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lovely. All right. Number nine. You're the manager. Give me the Cambridge United five-a-side team. Okay, five-a-side team. So it's got to be one that leaves four players outfield. So we'll probably play like one of those diamonds. So you've yep. got one defender. I'll probably go with AJ. Um, wingers and midfielders. I'll maybe pick Bella, top goal scorer, definitely. Or out on the um, left wing. I think that's where she plays. And then maybe pick like one other midfielder. I don't know. <laughs> Put her on the spot. 
I'd, I'd maybe go, maybe go Sammy. So Sammy's quite like a defender who will put her body on the line. She'll really fight for the team. Maybe sometimes takes it a bit far. She's <laughs> probably got the most yellow cards in the team this season. But I feel like you need a bit of that sometimes. You need a bit of that. That's reminding me of Katie McCabe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I like. <laughs> yeah, similar vibe to that. Similar vibe to that. Um, and then up top. I go Sarah Wilshire, just absolute class player. Lovely. So that's the five aside. Excellent. All right. Last question in this block is: money is no object. This is down to you. Where do you take your Cam- Cambridge women to- for a warm winter training session? You can go anywhere Ooh. you want to go. That's quite a nice question. I mean, <laughs> I feel like it's can't be somewhere too far. Like you don't want to have that jet lag type thing like you can't go all the way to Australia because then you've got to come back and you've got the jet lag so I feel like somewhere somewhere maybe in Europe I don't know how how warm the countries are I mean like Spain but maybe that's not that warm in winter yeah I, don't know, maybe... I was thinking Spain when you said Europe I was like yep Spain <laughs> yeah, but maybe maybe it's not that warm in winter maybe it's more more cold I don't know somewhere somewhere in Europe I reckon I don't I feel like you don't want the jet lag if I want the jet lag Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. All right. So we're going to go into our last block, which is you as a gooner. We'll talk about it. And every goal ignites a community. Welcome to Grassroots Gazette on the ground up where football finds its voice. Boom. Okay. So how many have we got in this one? Oh, yeah. This one is split. So we've got about eight questions. And then we got a would you rather, another eight questions, nice and easy between players. So let's start. The first question is, how did you become an Arsenal women's supporter? Like, was it a specific moment that drew you to the club? <clears throat> so obviously having the season ticket at the Emirates when I was younger, that's what got me into Arsenal. My mum's a massive Arsenal fan, so I don't I don't feel like I could have chosen any other. <laughs> there was, yeah. <laughs> um, but with the women, I feel like when I started following Arsenal age about seven, you wouldn't have heard of the women at all. Like, I, I just wasn't really aware of women's football generally. It just wasn't, there wasn't the social media presence that there is now. Yeah. Um, but I think the first thing that probably opened my eyes to them, I was in a book bookstore looking at the football books, trying to pick one, and I came across Kelly Smith's autobiography. Yeah. And I picked that. I was like, I've got to read this. This looks really interesting. And just learning about her football journey and her playing with Arsenal as well. Like, I just wasn't really aware of Arsenal women before then. But after then, I was like, I'm, I'm following these. Yeah, I'm, I'm in now. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how, but I'm, I'm following them. Excellent. Excellent. All right, number two. Who is your favourite player playing now and why? I think you've said her name about a few times already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have. Leo Williamson, 100%. 100% yeah. Both on and off the pitch. Like, class, class. Class, lovely. Okay, what is your favourite memory of watching Arsenal women play, either live or TV? I think the first time I probably watched them play, like, generally, is we we went and watched them at, win the FA Cup final, maybe back in, like, 2015 against Chelsea. That's probably the first time I ever saw them play because it wasn't, it wasn't really on TV. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, so that, that was a really special moment and that was getting to watch them win it as well was really cool. Obviously not not sold out Wembley like it was last Saturday or whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it was still still really special. Just my first experience of ever getting to watch a women's football match. So that was that and was that really nice. well, yeah, so yeah. That's, nice. that's nice. Lovely. Have you ever attended a match at Meadow Park? Yeah, so I got to go I've been to one game. I really want to go back, but it's hard because like with weekends I'm playing football myself or refereeing. So it's it's hard. But um yeah, I got to go watch them play Man City, I think, in 2019 mm-hmm. at Meadow Park. Um, and they won. And it was it was a really, really cool match. And I just, I really like the vibe there. Like, I didn't realise how close you are to the players. Yeah, you're right there, innit? You're right, you're right there. Even when you're at the back of the road, you're still there. <laughs> Literally, it's, it's really nice, especially, like, when you compare that to the Emirates. There's nice things about the Emirates and the atmosphere, but, like, you're not as connected. Yeah. Like, the connection at Meadow Park is really special. Yeah, definitely. Um, are there probably going to say no but are there any particular superstitions you have when you're watching the women's game something that you have to do have to wear 
No, not really. I mean, oh. it's, always, it's always nice to wear like the kit or bring a scarf or that kind of thing because then you feel feel part of it and people yeah. can recognise you as an Arsenal fan. That's quite nice. But no particular superstitions, no. Lovely. Um, next question is, are there any youth players in the Arsenal women team set up that you're particularly excited about, about watching? <clears throat> mm. I've, like I said, I've been struggling to follow it the last few seasons because of um, my own football. It's really hard to balance school football and supporting Arsenal. Um, but I have seen a few of the young players coming through and it does look like the setup is really good. I know the Arsenal Academy is brilliant. I've got some friends in there. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know about specific names, but it is looking the future is looking bright for Arsenal women. It's looking yeah. bright. Definitely. Definitely. I agree with that. All right. What is your favourite Arsenal's kit? Or Arsenal women's kit, Arsenal kit period. Mm, so I have the first Arsenal kit I ever got. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's quite special for me. Um, I'm pretty sure it was like the 2016 one. It was quite like a. Who's the, who's the sponsor? I normally can think of it from that. Who do you remember? Who the sponsor is on the shirt? Like the Puma? Was it? Is it or Sega or Dreamcast? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We've had so many. O2. Oh, two. Oh, I just remember everything. But fair know. enough. Right. Is that, was it a home kit or an away kit? Home kit. Home oh. kit. That's quite special. But the other one I like, the the black one they have with the oh. cannon. I've got that one as well with Williams on the back. Yeah. That kit is so nice. <laughs> I bet. I bet. I bet. All right. Last question before we go into the would you rather. What do you think of Tottenham? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no, no. Say, I'm, say S word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not answering. Not answering with that. <laughs> um, you're trying to stitch me up here. <laughs> Swear to see where the uh, where it was coming from. But cool. No, we can skip it. You're, you're a pro, so don't want to like mess up the future. <laughs> you know me. All right. So here we go. We're going to go into some would you rather's quick and easy. Web and Moy or Leah Williamson? Williamson. I love Web and Moy, but. Yeah, Williamson. she's come. She's come along so much, so well. Yeah. yeah no, it's Leah, isn't it? Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Katie McCabe or Catley? Katie McCabe. I love her like tenacious defending style. She's like a little firecracker on the pitch yeah, that's, why, that's why I say her whole name I, don't, I can't just say McCabe Katie McCabe I say her whole name <laughs> yep. uh, we've got Ford or Mido 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 oh. definitely Mido. <laughs> uh, we've got Russo or Black Stinius ooh ooh I mean, like, I like both of them. I really like Russo but I feel like Black Stinius having been at the club a bit longer like, I feel like I feel like I know her a bit better if you know yeah, what I mean okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Stina Blackstinius. All right. Last three. Cooney Cross or Volti? Mm. <laughs> Cooney Cross, I reckon. I reckon both both good players, but I reckon Cooney Cross. Lovely. All right. Here we go. Pelova or Manum? Manum. Mm. Manum. Frida Manum. Yeah. I'm with Frida, you get me? Look how she recovered as well. Boom, boom, boom. Back at it. All right, last one. Zinsberger or D'Angelo? Goalkeepers. Uh, I love Zinsberger. She's, when I went to that game back in like 2019 or whatever at Meadow Park, you get to meet some of the players afterwards. Right. And she was one of the ones coming around. She was like really classy and that really, really nice down to earth. So I'm going to have to go Zinsberger. Zinsberger. Lovely. Beatrice, that's it. Thank you very much. You smashed it. Thank you very much for giving us your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I really, really enjoyed it. Really good fun. You're very welcome. (laughs) Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next episode. Appreciate it. We out of here. Grassroots Gazette. From the ground up. Remember, the spirit of football lives within us all. Until next time, keep the passion alive and the dream soaring. This has been Grassroots Gazette. From the ground up.